Oh, Thaddeus, as we move on, <laughs> you never, you've never heard a Muslim read this passage before, have you? Strangely enough, I have. You have? Oh, well, I'll read it just so I can, I can, can like, re, like refresh your memory here. So not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. Hmm. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we have prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. I can see Swati right now angrily typing at the thing. See, see, I told you. He'll be saying things like, Sharia, Jesus is saying Sh Sharia, right? Um, Jesus tells people that if they call him Lord, they will go to hell, right? You Christians are hell bound. And as Zachary Nike says, you more, we are, we are more Christian than Christian. We are more Christian than Christian. But I, sorry, I'm a heavy metal fan. White Zombie says more human than human. I don't know who says it better, Zachary Knight, White Zombie. I don't know. But it, at any rate, right? So first thing I want to say. Before before you say that, I said yeah. this was it's totally out of context. But earlier, much earlier, Protestant believers said metal is the best music, and I saved it for this moment. <laughs> oh yeah. Well. Yep, uh, they were talking about something unrelated. But he said that, oh, really? and I was like, oh, I know that, that, oh. that this is going to come useful later. I'm like, were you were you leaking that information? Like, how did he know? That's awesome. That's funny. Yeah, metal metal is good music. Um, yeah, I, I I hate to I hate to say it, but the, you know, there's there's some pretty decent Christian rock bands out there too, so we can we can still rock out. Um, anyhow, so the first thing I want to say about this, and I'll just like refresh our memory, right? So, Lord, Lord, you call them Lord, you're gonna go to hell. That's what they always say, right? That we've it's yes, we've heard it before. So the first thing, calling Jesus Lord in this passage, Jesus is saying that this is actually a requirement. To order to get to in, in order to get to heaven, that's part of the requirement. Muslims, anytime you cite this passage, I go, Jesus Lord, Kyrios, which is translated Adonai, which is Yahweh from the Old Testament. Is that you're saying that? It's fine. Okay, Christ is Christ is Lord. Christ is God. Great. Let's do it. Right. Um, but Jesus is is saying just merely calling me Lord is not the end all be all faith statement that's not he's saying that just saying this doesn't mean anything um and then it's a wonder why he's talking about the fruit and all that kind of stuff before this verse it's almost as if jesus is giving a sermon and the sermon has context i don't, I don't know we don't pay attention to context do we Thaddeus? uh well you know when i go to the quran I, there really isn't much context. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's so true. I, I can actually understand how Muslims will come to the Bible and they'll be like, I can just take this half of a verse out of context and, and, and uh, use that against you. Zakir Naik told me I could, and that's how I learned the Quran. Well, I have people course. tell me what the Quran says, so he, he couldn't be lying. He's a Muslim. He's <laughs> defeated every Christian he's ever debated. Well, all two of them um, 20 years ago, who neither of which had any debate experience whatsoever. Right. <laughs> we are more Christian than the Christian. That is all. That is all. Okay. So, um, right. So, just calling Christ, calling Christ Lord a requirement. Okay. First and foremost, Muslims will not do that. They might distort what the word Lord means in that circumstance. But anyhow, so um, so here's here's a little picture I'm going to paint, right? I can call myself a woman. I can dress like a woman. I can talk like a woman. I can act in every way, shape, and form like a woman, right? But I'm although I'm not a biologist, I'm pretty sure just calling myself a woman does not make me biologically a woman. I hate to say this, right? Likewise, using that same example, calling Jesus Lord does not mean that you actually hold him in the place of being a Lord or your Lord, right? Um, so this is why Jesus led with the good fruit, bad fruit discussion before he said this, right? Because he goes on to explain a little bit further 
He says that, you know, if you just pay me lip service, devoid of the fruits, it's it's useless, right? Just as fruits, producing fruits without faith, as, as Paul says, is as dirty rags. It's useless. True faith is known only by God. And if that faith is true, it will be witnessed as true fruits. We covered this already. I know Muslims are already trying to, oh, I thought you said earlier. Yes, it, it true faith and true works and true deeds come from true love of God, true acceptance of Christ, all those changed heart, circumcision of heart, born again, new nature, getting rid of our sin nature. All right? Secondly, um, what is the law? All right? Because Jesus says that, uh, you know, uh, get away from me. I never knew you who broke God's laws. So the question is, what is the law? We've talked about this quite a bit. The law is to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. He just said it. That's the golden rule. To love God, right, with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, and all your spirit. And that includes your enemies. And Christ says that you must be willing to lay down your life for your friends. And that was immediately after Jesus called us, the God of the universe, called us his friends. And this was right around the same time that he stooped down and washed his disciples' feet, telling them that he must wash their feet in order for them to be with him in heaven. So Jesus goes on to clarify who is God, right? Because you have to follow God's laws. But who's who's God? He says, before, yeah, before, ahead, you, before you answer that question, uh, we have a new Muslim who just entered the chat. Welcome, new Ab Muslim. Abdullah Cuddy. He says, Jesus is not Lord. Jesus is only a prophet of God. And you tuned in just the right time because we're about to get to Jesus, what Jesus says about his own authority. Um, so I first, hope you stay long enough to hear. First of all, Abdullah, first thing I want you to do is I want you to attack fear of Jesus because he calls himself Lord. So I want you to attack fear of Jesus, and for all of you who don't know what that means, you're basically anathematizing Jesus. I want you to say it in the chat. Be bold. Be brave. Tell us that you reject Jesus' own words. Go for it. I dare you. Jesus also tells you how to pray, by the way. He says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So I also go ahead and go ahead and attack fear of Jesus uh, for calling God Father, although God is not a father to anyone, because apparently... Uh, he has taken no consort, although he could among the other gods with him, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. And all he has to do is say B, and it is, even though every time he never says that, and he has to send an angel to blow, and, and never mind. All right. So go ahead, buddy. Yeah, I was, I was about to say, yeah, let's let, let's not go there. <laughs> I, I typically know the limits. Uh, I can't say for sure, but typically I do. No, no, actually, I don't. I. You know, it's not off limits. It's just uh, you know we don't we want to get to Jesus's authority. Why uh, before Abdul Cuddy runs away? Yes, absolutely. All right, Abdul, keep listening here, buddy. We're here for you. So the question was right: um, Who is God? Whose teachings ought we to follow? Because that's what Jesus says: follow God's laws. This is what Jesus says: Anyone who listens to my What's that say again? Thaddeus, maybe I misread it. M Y, what's that say? Um, yeah, I, it's a strange word, but I, I think you pronounced it correctly. My. My. My teaching. And so the person who's speaking here is who? Well, it, it, we do have this hint that it's in red letters. Mm -hmm. And Jesus has been speaking for a long time. So I, I think it's still Jesus that's speaking. I mean, the, I'm, I know in the Quran that the who's speaking will just change from verse to verse without any clue that someone Earl, else is talking. <laughs> but in, in ordinary uh, writing, in ordinary texts, until someone else is identified as speaker, it's still the same person. Mm, okay. So he just says that you you must follow God's laws, breakers of God's laws. But then again, anyone who listens to God's teachings... Wait, it should say God, right? It should say God's teachings. And in fact, it does. Because the speaker <laughs> is God, and using the pronoun of himself, identifying self as my, that's how normal people talk, 
right? Anyone who listens to my, me, who is God's teachings and follows it is wise, like a person who builds her house on a, on a solid rock. Though the rain comes and torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against the house, it won't collapse because it is built on the bedrock. Once again, Jesus says, anyone who listens to my teachings is wise, right? Anyone who listens to God's teachings is wise. And you can insert Father, you can insert Son, you can insert Holy Spirit because they are ontologically the same one substance, one God, okay? Not same person, ontologically the same substance, right? And let, let me ask you to tech fear Jesus again here for giving you commandments from himself and from himself only if, <clears throat> sorry, if you do not think that he is God. You have to tech fear him. You have to anathematize him. Yeah, uh, so far, Abdul Qadi, Abdul uh, Qadi, sorry, has not done that. So I guess there's two possibilities. Either he's not listening and he doesn't know that you've asked him to do, or he doesn't want to do that for some reason. Yeah, I'm going to go with, uh, it's probably 50-50. He could be doing either or. Um, so, uh, Abdul, please, please let us know which one is correct. Are right. you and listening? Or and not, because you've asked me some questions, and I'll be happy to address those questions. But I would like you to put in the chat, "I am listening." Let me take let me take the Muslim side here, okay? Um, let me let me pretend, right? That if let me just say this: if it were true that Jesus, mere man, mere mortal, mere prophet, merely in the Messiah, right? This would be blasphemy. And that would, if a prophet comes up and starts talking like this, that would that would be blasphemous because they're taking the authority of God and pretending that they have it, which Muhammad does all the time, by the way. So you should actually tech fear Muhammad, but not Jesus, because Jesus claims to be God, and Jesus is in fact God. So no mere prophet could make this statement. And if you follow Jesus, if you're more Christian than the Christian then you should actually follow the teachings of what Jesus says. And Jesus says that he, if you follow his teachings, his teachings, it's as if you've built a house on the rock. It's almost as if, I don't know here, Thaddeus, Jesus is the ultimate authority. It's yeah, uh, he seems to be claiming authority here. Yeah. Something that he strangely seems to do throughout the entire gospel narrative right. all four it's, gospels and hmm. practically every time he speaks he's claiming divine authority in some way interesting but but if anyone who hears my teachings the teachings of god and doesn't obey it is foolish like a person who builds a house on sand out in the desert who marries a six-year-old and consummates the marriage with a nine-year-old Sorry, <laughs> they're foolish. When the rain and the floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Because why? If you reject the authority of God, you're putting your house on the sand. And anytime something bad happens, it will completely wipe you off. It will wipe you out. Absolutely. Um, yeah, go ahead. So be before you move on, um, Swati has made a number of comments, but this one I think kind of sums them up. Are you jumping from here to there? Do you call him Lord or not? Um, Swati, first of all, how did we jump? We went from one verse to the next verse. That, that's not jumping around. You, you need to understand the difference between properly exegeting text texts and jumping around. Second of all, to answer your question, absolutely, we call Jesus Lord. Did you not listen to anything we said? Yeah, I that, that it, You would have to be completely idiotic to read that verse as Jesus saying, do not call me Lord. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, I have to be I, blunt. This, this is such an idiotic interpretation, just in English. Just in, if you go to a hundred native English speakers and you ask them, what does this mean? Take out Jesus' name, you know, make it so they don't understand what it, it, that you're asking about the Bible. So there's no theology involved. A hundred out of 100 
will some tell you that the, the person is saying that calling me Lord is insufficient. They, none of them will say it means do not call me Lord because that's what the words of English mean. That's just what it means. And you're telling us that this is a, he also said, out of context. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> How is it out of context? We went from one verse to the very next verse to the very next verse. That's all we did the entire time. Right. And you're and telling even, us yeah. Yeah. out of context? Are you insane? All we did is actually read the words and tell you. I know English isn't your first language, but I have a feeling you understand what they mean in English, and you just your mind is so twisted by Zucker Nike or whoever you heard this from's ridiculous argument that this is Jesus saying, "Don't call me Lord." I I have never ever heard anyone other than a Muslim interpret that verse that way, mm -hmm. and I have talked to many 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 people who are not Christians or who have poor understanding of Christian theology and have no idea that Christians would say Jesus is Lord. They wouldn't interpret that way because it makes no sense to interpret it that way. <laughs> well, let's 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 let, let's go with this, right? So uh, Jesus says to the scribes and the Pharisees, he says, um, "So you know the Son of Man." is the Lord of the Sabbath. So Jesus refers to himself as the Lord of the Sabbath, right? And since he came to himself and called himself Lord, according to this Muslim logic, he, he himself will not enter the kingdom of heaven. He himself, right, released demons and did good works and miracles and stuff in his own name. Um, I mean, like, how many times do you have to tech fear Jesus? How many times do Muslims have to do this unwittingly? I know you don't realize you're doing this, but almost a, a, a significant percentage of the arguments that you guys make is outright condemning Christ's own words. It's it's absolutely insane to me how they do this. And and here here's the other the, the reason I was laughing earlier, Thaddeus, was because I led we led with that. We led with Muslims hear this and think, and then we literally said what they think, and then Swati decides that it's a good idea minutes later to type in the argument what we just said that he was going to think and forgot to listen to why what they think is wrong. When someone knows your argument before you use it, there's a really good chance, and they have a refutation for it, there's a really good chance you don't have a good argument. That's all I'm going to say. Absolutely. So I put Abdullah in timeout because he clearly was not listening. He kept, even though I asked him multiple times to say that he was listening, and I even put it in the chat, he just kept spamming random things. So he has been put in timeout. Uh, which which fallacy was he committing there? <laughs> <laughs> he was uh, red herring. Oh, red herring, red herring, red herring. Hi, red herring. Welcome to the chat. Uh, so Swati also said this verse is an embarrassment for Christian. All right, he said there's embarrassment for Christian in this think, verse. Is he saying embarrassment? Yeah, he, he's okay. intending to say embarrassment. Um, and no, no, Swati, we are not embarrassed. We agree with this verse one hundred percent. Absolutely. Not everyone who performs a ritual action and says, Jesus, your Lord, I bow down to you, is actually following Jesus. That's what the verse means. We agree with that 100%. There is zero embarrassment. There's not one. even a hint of embarrassment. Like I said, I have literally never had anyone bring this up. You know, atheists, they don't bring it up. Agnostics, they don't bring it up. The, and most Muslims are even smart enough not to bring this up. But every once in a while, there's that Muslim who got this idiotic argument from listening to Zakir Naik or whoever and thinks, oh, yes, this verse is so embarrassing for Christians because Jesus says, don't call me Lord, when that's not what the words mean at all. There are zero people who understand English, who understand Greek, who uh, understand how to exegete a text that would read it that way and find it embarrassing. Yeah. I can tell you there are verses that people find embarrassing in Christianity. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is not one of them. This is absolutely not one of them. Um, and by the way, I, I have a Bible app. I looked this up the other day. Um, it has over 1,800 languages on it. 
So it's called U version Bible app. Download it from your app store, find whatever language you speak, and then you can actually read the Bible in your language. In case English is too difficult for you to understand, comprehend, go ahead and read that, right? And if you have a genuine question, we're more than happy to spend some time and, and answer it for you. It's, it's like I almost went into this whole, uh, I almost gave an analogy. Remember like when I almost gave an analogy earlier, uh, Thaddeus about, about, you know, I could identify myself as a woman, but it doesn't actually make me a woman. I could identify mm -hmm. Christ as mm -hmm. Lord, but he's not mm -hmm. actually in my heart. I don't actually think that he's he's Lord. I could say it out loud. I could pay lip service, all those types of things that, that we refuted him with before he even made the argument, but still went ahead and made the argument anyway. Uh, that was that was fun. That was. Uh... <laughs> yeah. So why don't you go ahead and finish your actual teaching? <laughs> and uh, there are some legitimate questions from uh, Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, not not from SWAT, Swati, of course, but 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 from uh, Christians to get to at the end. So if you want to go ahead right, and perfect. finish the yeah. actual teaching, that'd be cool. um right. So, um, so the ultimate authority, who's teaching with authority, right? Christ is taking the authority as if he were God, because he is, and the crowds, right? So when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teachings. For he taught with real authority, quite unlike their teachers of religious law. Right? So Matthew points out that Jesus taught unlike anyone before. None of the other prophets taught this way. Right? They always would say things like, thus says the Lord, God says, Yahweh says, right? This is and the scribes and the Pharisees and the rabbis would say the same thing. They would, they would cite scriptures they would cite interpretations and say this is what the scripture says or this is what our tradition says that ultimately comes from god whereas jesus on the other hand he just speaks as if he's god if he's not god it's blasphemous we, he's not a prophet he's a false prophet but if he is god then we ought to actually pay attention and treat him as such which christians do we accept him as lord we accept him as christ we accept him as savior right we accept them as all of these things um and and this is this is the point right it's it's just it's just obvious that christ is the ultimate authority the perfect example for mankind not a single moral flaw that jesus did had said right and he taught perfect morality perfect ethics and way, way, way better than any of the moral teachings of Muhammad or the moral actions of Muhammad, because you know a tree by its fruit. And we know that Christ is the good fruit. All right, so conclusions, thoughts, what's the audience think? What do you think, Thaddeus? I, I think that we had uh, a great stream today. Oh, we got a, a comment here, though, from Swati. They misunderstand Jesus as they misrepresent his teaching. And what is your evidence for that, Swati? All of what biblical scholar, and, and I, since you may not know this, let me just tell you that a lot of biblical scholars are not Christians, so they will not be reading Christian theology into the text. So do tell us what biblical scholar says that uh, Jesus taught a Muslim understanding of him, that they view him as uh, a human prophet who, whose words were, uh, you know, good moral teaching and, and nothing else. There's only two possibilities for what an atheist scholar would say. They would say either say Jesus didn't say these things, in which case, they, you know, you can't conclude anything about it, or they would say that, that these were, uh, these words clearly mean that he thought he was a uh, divine prophet, mm -hmm. <laughs> a divine prophet, right. you know, that he's in a class by himself, yes. that he thought he had God's authority. There is no one who, who reads this text and says, this guy uh, just thought that he was a prophet and Christians have misunderstood his words. There's no one that seriously studies the text that says that. Why do you think that we believe? What what, what do you think is the, our main proof for for why Christ is is God? 
Thaddeus? Uh, what is? Are you asking me what my favorite? Yeah, what do you think options? one of our main proofs is, especially from like a historical perspective? Ah, uh, thank you for for clearing me in where you're going. Yeah, so the main proof that Jesus is God is that he claimed that he would be crucified and most crucially rise from the dead, mm -hmm. and then he did that. And this can stand up to historical Ooh. scrutiny. But wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a minute. Um, it's historically factual that Christ was crucified to death, right? And rose mm -hmm. from the dead. He predicted mm -hmm. this. Psalms 22, Isaiah 53 are some really key passages that talk about this, this um, kind of death and, and, and resurrection uh, narration, especially when it comes to um, some details of the crucifixion, when it comes to paying and atoning for sins, all those types of things. And, and we can go into, you know, a whole bunch of other um, uh, thematic things that go throughout that, that run throughout the Old Testament that that prove that this was a prophesied thing. Um, but I'm I'm confused. We believe that. Why do we believe that from a from a Muslim's perspective? Why do we believe Christ was killed to death? Uh, according to the Quran, I, I, maybe we shouldn't say a Muslim's perspective because Muslims tend to be rather ignorant. But um, sorry to be blunt, but they tend to be rather ignorant about what the Quran says. But according to the Quran, the Allah tricked people into <laughs> believing that Jesus was crucified on the cross. So it's it's Allah's fault ultimately. Yes. So, so either, so either Christianity is false, and Allah is responsible for propagating the largest religion, which also happens to be a false religion in, in human history, directly leading uh, multiple billion people to hell. Which I guess Allah is fine with that, um, but I'm not fine with a God who would do that. Hmm. Or it means Allah is lying hmm. when he says that that Jesus wasn't crucified. One or the other. There's the only two possibilities. Either he was responsible for tricking two billion Christians, or uh, plus, you know, maybe two and a half billion in world history, uh, or he is incorrect. Either way, uh, not a God I want to serve. Hmm. Funny how that turned on your head, didn't it, Swatty?